Hi, my name is Joe Hicklin. I'm a senior developer at the MathWorks. Today I'm going to stress test myself, but I'm not going to get on a treadmill. I'm going to pretend that I'm a bank and I'm going to stress test myself mathematically. You've probably heard about stress testing banks. Federal law requires that banks above a certain size evaluate the performance of their portfolio under difficult economic times and report those results. Uh, but this isn't limited to just banks. Anybody with a portfolio can do this. To do this stress test, you'll need three things. You'll need a portfolio of outstanding loans, a model that predicts the behavior of your portfolio, and a definition of difficult economic times. Since I'm a bank, we're just going to assume I have my loan data. It's what I do for a living, so I can just load that in. So I'm going to read in an Excel file uh, of my current portfolio. And this will read in a table uh, where each row is a separate loan and each column is a piece of information about that loan. So I've got a table of 100 loans here that I've got outstanding right now. So that's my first piece. Now I have to make my model. My model of how my loans will perform is going to assume that loans in the future are going to behave the same way that loans in the past did. To figure that out, we're going to need a table of loans uh, from the past. But since I'm a bank, I've got that too. I'm going to load a table of the loans I've made historically, and we'll read that in the same way. This will take a little while because it's got almost 700,000 loans. All right, so here it is. Again, it's the same information as before, but there's one additional column, whether it defaulted or not. Since these are, uh, loans are over with, I know whether the loan has defaulted or not. We want our model to take economic data into account as well as loan information. So we need to augment our table of loans with information about how the economy was doing when these loans were outstanding. Uh, the Federal Reserve provides such a data set for just this purpose. So I can load this in. And this tells what the GDP and uh, the stock market did for each of these years. I need to combine these two tables, but it's not as simple as just attaching the tables to each other. I need to pull out the right line for the right year for each loan. And that's called a join. So here I will join these two tables. And this is now a table that has the original loan information along with the uh, economic data. I'm going to fit a generalized linear model to this data. And here I'm telling it to use these variables in the table to do the prediction and that I want it to predict the default rate. So let's build that model. And if I display the, uh, the predictions of the model compared to the historical default rates, you can see they match pretty well. The blue lines are the historical data, the orange line is the model, and it's not exact, but it's pretty close. So now that we have uh, our portfolio of outstanding loans and we have our model, we need to have a definition of adverse economic condition. And again, the Fed provides this data. And I need to attach this data to my outstanding loan portfolio, just like I did before. So I'll do another join, and that produces this table here, which has a line for each of my outstanding loans and also the economic prediction for how the economy is going to be. Now that I've got those two, I can run, I can use my model to predict what it's going to do. It produces a new table, and the only difference is there is now a new column, which is the probability of default for each loan. Right, so there's our prediction. If I compare these predictions with the historical behavior, you can see that the orange lines, the predictions that we made, is, is higher than the historical predictions, higher than historical behavior. And that makes sense because we're predicting under adverse economic times. So if this comes about, how much money am I going to lose? Well, the money I'm going to lose is the uh, probability that, I that a loan, particular loan defaults times how much money I'll lose if that loan defaults. And so I can just calculate that for all the loans, sum them up. We've learned that the expected loss comes to about $23 million, so I'll just stuff that under my mattress. Of course, I've glossed over a whole bunch of details to keep this short. On our website, you can find more detailed and realistic examples of this kind of analysis. Nobody knows what the future economy will actually do, and any particular prediction is likely to be wrong. To predict what the likely outcome of our portfolio is, what we would do is produce a distribution of economic performances and then sample that distribution using Monte Carlo simulation to produce a distribution of outcomes from my portfolio. We'll try that in a future video.